Hi everybody, uh, welcome to EdChat Interactive. My name is Mitch Weisberg and I'll be hosting Mark here today. Um, our, our goal is to give you some information that you can take back to your systems and use and to discuss the way uh, you're trying to improve your, your lessons, your classrooms and your schools as well. Our, our main speaker today is going to be Mark Barnes. Uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of an intro to EdChat Interactive. Um, what, what we are trying to do with EdChat Interactive is to provide a different way of uh, imparting knowledge and skills than the old webinar way. It's, it's a lot more interactive methodology in that we break people into small groups so that you can talk about whatever the subject is um, and then we pull you together so you can learn from other people. Um, what I'd like to do first before uh, sh showing Mark is to do a brief intro of the Shindig platform because this, it's, it's a unique platform and it's pretty cool. So I'm going to stop the slideshow and I'm going to pull up a video intro to Shindig. And, uh, and and get that going. And then that will show you how to use the Shindig platform. When that's over, I'll come back up and introduce Mark. And here we go. Welcome to Shindig, the video chat event provider. This video will guide you through our basic features. Click on any participant's image to engage in a private video chat. Double click on another participant to add them to your existing conversation. Click the arrow to exit. You can also send an instant message, either to an individual or to your entire room. Want to interact with the host? Use the buttons on the lower right. Click raise hand to signal to the event administrator that you want to be brought on stage. Otherwise, submit a question to the host via text. If the system has not automatically detected your webcam and microphone, roll over your image and click Settings. Click your image to enable your working webcam. Choose a working microphone by selecting the option with volume indicators that flash green in response to your voice. We hope this was helpful. Enjoy the event. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. And now let me pull my slides back up. I had originally planned on going through a, a more detailed version, but the, the video I think does a better job. I will just say underneath your icon there are two buttons. One is raise hand and the second is ask a question. Raise hand means uh, I can see if you raise your hand and that may mean that you want you want me to uh, chat with you. And ask a question is a question that is asked directly to me. Uh, as the administrator. If you want to communicate with the other people here, you can IM, which is also something that um, if you uh, highlight your icon, you can see that there's an IM button on your icon, and then you can open up the IM and you can talk to people. See it right here, you can see the back channel. But let me just quickly go, go through here, and I think that what we're going to do is uh, just get right into Mark. I will say on August 25th we have another interesting session. Uh, we have Matt Farber coming. Matt's a, a teacher, gamer. He's an Edutopia blogger and he speaks all over the country. He's going to be talking about game jams which is a, a way to motivate kids to create games and by having them create games on different subjects you can really give them not just the 21st century skills but also academic skills. Uh, he uses it I believe in his uh, social studies and history class, but other people use it in math, science, and EA. But for tonight, what we're having is the inimitable Mark Barnes. Uh, Mark Barnes is author of a new book called Hacking Education. Uh, he's also uh, a, uh, he's also written other books. He's a keynoter, and he's really one of the prime movers of the teachers throwing out grades movement, which is to give kids really authentic feedback rather than a numeric grade. So let me let me stop this and let me pull up Mark. Okay. How are you doing? Hey Mitch. Doing so great. welcome back. Yep, yeah, good. Welcome back to EdChat. And 
I guess we were short, we were talking a little bit earlier. In addition to the, the the book hacking education, you were mentioning that you're writing another book. What's that book going to be on? Well, I'm I'm actually not writing it. Uh, I'm I'm publishing it. The, there's uh, the hack learning series is uh, a a collection of books on the whole idea of hack learning, which I'll talk about a little bit this evening. And um, so the first book is hacking education: ten quick fixes for every school which I co-authored with Jennifer Gonzalez. Uh, Jen writes the Cult of Pedagogy blog and um, join us tonight, but had uh, uh, mothering that she had to do. And uh, anyway, the second book in the series is called Hacking Assessment, um, how to go gradeless in a traditional grade school. So you mentioned in that um, nice open there about the um, Throwing out grades movement and uh, or the no grades classroom movement we often refer to it as, and um, so uh, I've written widely on that of course and co-moderate the teachers throwing out grades group on Facebook which is very large now, uh, you know for such and a specific very group yeah yeah it's it's um, you know there's about four five hundred or more people now around the world there. Not long ago, I did a really cool, just in the group, say, um, where are you from? Because I always tell people it's a global group. And I said, I'd, I'd really like to find out how global is it. And uh, so I just put in one day, hey, you know, just tell us where you're from. And it was really a nice showing. There was over 300 people in the group who hmm. came in and said where they were from. And I think at last count, I was well up into the 20s in countries uh, including the United States um, that are represented in that group. So it truly is a global movement. So um, in planning out the whole hack learning series, uh, which I'm hoping is going to be an ongoing books uh, with this whole idea of, of hack learning, of saying, you know, we can, we can kind of go at problems a different way and we can solve them in ways that I think traditional education really doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I thought assessments seem to be, you know, a, a pretty good, um, topic to get to next, and uh, you know, I, I could I could have written this book, but I really like the idea of having Star Saxteen write it because she's still in the classroom, and, uh, and she fantastic. has been, she's really yeah, good. She, she's she's been amazing. You know, in one of the people honestly who is really a pioneer, and I think there are just a few of those. You know, real pioneers in. A, a true movement to say we want to eliminate grades completely or as close to completely as we can and get kids talking about learning and she's done so many creative things in the classroom that when we first talked about it, in fact when I asked her she said how come you're not writing the book and uh, I said you know I, I've, I've written widely on the subject and I think people have heard plenty from me on it and not not to say that I won't continue to talk about it but I said you know I think it's great to have someone who um, is in the classroom uh, and, and doing a lot of really creative things with stimulating conversation about learning and, uh, and, and a lot of things that other people aren't doing. And in that uh, Facebook group, we get so many questions. You know, we get new people every day. So a lot of times we talk about the same things because new people come in and they have the same questions others have asked. And um, a lot of it is, you know, very specific things like they sort of get the overall. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try and not put grades, numbers, or letters on kids' work, and we're gonna we're gonna just try and talk to them about it. But what does that look like? And and how do you do that in a large group? If I have a hundred students, how do I talk to them all the time about uh, what they're learning? And and then how do I if I where there are report cards? How do I do report cards if I'm not doing grades every day? And uh, there's just so many different fabrics to it, and um, she's great because she's done all of it. So that's wow. really what this book. I'm mm -hmm. very excited um, when it, it's scheduled to come out in November, and I'm really excited about it because she's really going to take those questions that people have asked and sort of break them down and say, okay, here's a problem you have with throwing out grades. Here's how you fix it today. Here's how you sort of expand upon it. And, and that's really that hack learning model is we want to provide solutions to problems for, for educators and teachers and, and leaders and parents and anyone who's what we call an education stakeholder. And we want to say there's problems and I, I think because schools are often caught up in sort of the, the bureaucracy of things and the, and the politics that get in the way, um, there are often solutions to problems that we just don't see 
or, right. or we think, right. well, that can't be done, or, or a lot of times it's things people haven't thought of, or very few people have thought of, but they haven't gotten it out to the world, and that's what we're trying to do. So, so I understand that you have some solutions, not necessarily to assessment, but solutions, solutions for schools you can go over tonight. Yeah, um, yeah. I want I want to talk a, about the the first book in the series. Uh, <laughs> so let me, so let me come down. I'll get your slides up. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Sure. So Farah, right now you look like an audience of one. So maybe we'll talk. Um, okay. So. I'm on and I assume you can hear me because I can't see the audience anymore. I've got my slides. Um, so let me, I, I started, you know, I'm, I was talking to Mitch a little bit about hacking it and the, and the idea of what we call hack learning. So this is the hack learning series and, uh, the, you know, a lot of people say, well, what, what is hacking um, or what, what's hack learning? So for me, um, you know, I, let me back up a little bit. The whole idea behind this started uh, about a year ago, and and I wrote a, a post on my blog, Brilliant or Insane, um, and and I wrote this post about three things that principals could could fix right away, and I call them gigantic problems. I don't know some some people might argue that they weren't gigantic, but. Um, I said three gigantic problems that principals could solve tomorrow. You could walk into school and you could say, here's a problem that really bothers teachers, but we're going to fix it right now. Well, that post was very popular, and a lot of people on social media reached out to me, and they said, boy, I really love this, and I think that you know this idea you have behind the post is something that could be developed into a book. So over time, I, I thought a lot about that, and I started sort of sketching out some ideas, and I'm, I'm in some Voxer groups, and um, Voxer's great. If you don't know Voxer, it's sort of a walkie-talkie type um, app that you can put on your mobile device. And it's sort of like voice texting, and you record your voice, and then a group of people can hear that, and then they can respond whenever they want. So Voxer's great for collaboration. So I was in a group, and um, we started talking about some of these problems, and Jennifer Gonzalez, who um, writes at Cult of Pedagogy, which if you don't know, Cult of Pedagogy, you should check it out. It's really tremendous. Uh, a great teaching site. She's got tons of stuff on there that helps teachers. And um, she and I started talking in a side vox. I got out of the group and I messaged her privately because she had said something about one of the things I'm going to talk about in these hacks tonight. Um, and, and that was about teachers collaborating in school to, um, to, to sort of help each other get better. And uh, we talked about that, and I said, you know, I really like this idea. And she had mentioned in the larger Voxer group someone she knew who was doing this thing at, her, at their school. And I said, you know, I'd like to do more with that because I'm going to write a book, and this is one of the problems that I'd like to hack. So, you know, she asked me a little more about that, and we talked about this idea of, of sort of looking at problems in ways that I think traditional educators and school leaders do not. And, and I said, you know, sort of cutting through red tape and using all of our assets in, in a different way. And uh, yeah, anyway, that long story short is that the more we talked, the more we sort of started coming up with ideas. And the next thing you know, we were co-authoring this book, which turned out to be the first in what I'm hoping is going to be a, a long time series. So um, it, in Hacking Education, we came up with uh, what we identified as 10 problems. And we had help from a lot of people you know, who we talk to in, in, on social media, some really rich conversations about, hey, what are the things going on in school that you're troubled by? And, and ultimately, we agreed on 10 things. And we said, what are quick fixes? Because, you know, teachers are, are tired of the, the go to committee and let's create a five-year plan. And I use that phrase a lot because I hear it. Well, we need a five-year plan. We need a mission and all of this. And teachers are tired of that. They want right now solutions. So anyway, the idea here is you can see in these bullets next to this book, just to, to, to get a framework of hack learning, what we like to do is identify a problem and then identify what we call the hack, which as our book promo here says is a ridiculously easy solution that you've likely never considered. Or you may have considered a part of it but thought, I'm not really sure how to flesh this out to really make it work. Or 
some cases, you may have been shut down by an administrator who said, we just can't do that for whatever reason. Uh, and, and then we like to create a section called what you can do tomorrow. And there's that. It's in my hands. This is the problem. Here's my solution. And I can walk into school tomorrow, and I can take these steps to start solving this problem. And then, of course, a lot of these things, they need capacity building. So we, we have a blueprint for full implementation. And this is an action plan that says, OK, you did this today to really get the ball rolling. And, and let's now create some steps to um, move this along uh, for the, the whole year and even beyond. And then lastly is a lot of people say, you know, this sounds great. I got a lot of this with the no grades movement, which we've talked a lot about, is, you know, people say, well, this sounds really good, but does it really work? Who's doing this? So uh, a, a part of this hack learning plan is also what we call the hack in action. Uh, our promo here says, yes, someone has actually done this. So in, in the book and in all books, there'll be a section that says, we've shown you this solution, and yes, there are people out there who do it. So what I'd like to do is just go through a couple of these hacks, and, and maybe we'll do them one at a time, and we'll see if we can chat a little bit more. So Mitch or whoever's helping me out, if you could move me to the next slide, I'm going to talk about one of our hacks. So this is, um, and this is actually the first chapter in hacking education, is called Meet Me in the Cloud. And this is something that is, is really just now beginning in schools. You know, we've got um, the, the cloud and cloud-based learning and, and cloud storage, you know, Google Drive and Dropbox, and now I think Microsoft's version is OneDrive. And these are places that you can store your documents so you don't have to have them on your computer, and hopefully they're secure and you don't worry about losing anything. So w one of these big problems we talked about with educators about really was time. The issue was time and the problem is time. When you say, and, and I tell you, uh, I talk to so many teachers, and I'm telling you, if I, I could put 10 in a room and say, tell me what bothers you that you'd like fixed, or what, what would you like more of, the answer is almost universally time. People say, I just don't have enough time in my day. And we talked about that with a lot of people and said, well, what is it about the day? Not to mention the fact that, that Jen and I have over 30 years between us in the classroom. And we certainly knew what we believed the answer to that to be, and that was meetings, that teachers are bogged down constantly meetings. Uh, you know, we've got faculty meetings, and you have department meetings, and if you're not on an academic team, you've got team meetings, um, parent meetings, which we can't really get rid of, but they might still fit this model, too. So we said, well, what could we do? And, and said, so we've got so much technology at our fingertips, isn't there a way that we can leverage the technology that we have and, and move a lot of things that happen in face-to-face -face meetings into the cloud. And, uh, and, and this is a, sort of a quick view of what we came up with. The, the idea that almost anything you do in a face-to-face meeting could be moved to the cloud using a, a bin, a storage bin, uh, like Dropbox or, or Google Drive or something like that. And then you could facilitate the conversation um, using a back channel. And that back channel could be something like Twitter or Voxer, which I mentioned already uh, on today's Meet. There's a whole lot of different kinds of back channels you can use. So what we're doing is we're suggesting, as you, as you see on this graphic here under bin, cloud storage, the things that could go in a, in a bin would be your agenda for a meeting. So principals sit down, they say, I've got a meeting coming up. What's this meeting about? And, um, and, and write down an agenda, which ultimately they hand to someone. You can do a meeting, it's distributed, or they email it and say, this is what we're going to talk about. So we said, why can't we put this agenda and maybe make it a little more detailed and store it somewhere where everyone can access it, uh, like Dropbox or Google? So we create something in this bin, a folder, or maybe even multiple folders, and we're going to and and other um, assets that would help. Maybe videos. Video is getting very popular now um, to deliver information because it's so easy to do in the mobile, world, so easy to create. Um, so as a principal or a department head or a teacher on a committee who's running a meeting, I can have this storage place and I can put valuable information in it, and my people can look at it any time. And you can still set guidelines of time. We might say, 
your the meeting is a week. We're going to say our our cloud-based meeting really is going to be a week long, and I'm going to put things in the bin throughout the week that you need to look at. Um, and and then we're going to carry on the conversation uh, on whatever back channel we agree on. So that way, I, if I go into this bin and I see here's something on the agenda and I have a question about it, um, it, I could probably write it there in a comment section. But what I might also do if my group of teachers were, um, and administrators were on in a Voxer group, what I might do then is just grab my device, click on the Voxer and say, hey, I'm looking at this or that. I'm not quite sure how this works. Can you give me some information? And this is a way to really facilitate a meeting uh, in the cloud without being in the same room face to face and and our contention is that you can do this pretty much with anything you know I used to say when I was a classroom teacher um, somewhat tongue-in-cheek be walking to a faculty meeting and teachers were always complaining about having to go to the meeting and I would say well the uh, somebody would say something about an idea or I would say something they go that sounds like a great idea and I always joked that faculty meetings were the place where gr great ideas go to die because oftentimes there's so many things going on at a faculty meeting that you really never get a whole lot done. But we think that this meeting in the cloud is a way to get things done uh, much more efficiently. So, so Mitch, um, I was thinking maybe maybe now we could we could have a little chat. Um, we could um, get together and and talk about this. I think a lot of time people their first thing is. Um, stumbling blocks and you know and that's a piece of the whole hack learning model is we deal with pushback because the first thing people say is okay this sounds good but what about this or that issue and we have a lot of answers for pushback so maybe we could talk about that now yeah one of the things that was occurring to me as you were talking is that uh, we all know how PLCs are so valuable in schools and it's, it's a way for peers to work through teaching techniques or issues or, or whatever and it, and and yet it's so difficult for everybody to get together at the same time in the same place and it seemed to me that this technique of meet me in the cloud is something that one could use for a PLC. Yeah and that's, uh, it's interesting that you, you brought up the PLC because actually my first experience with this was in a PLC and on um, we were together at a meeting and it was the same thing somebody couldn't make it somebody came late someone had to leave early and uh, someone was sort of just voiced their opinion and very, was very frustrated and said um, we just don't get anything done because you know everybody's busy with other things people were coaching there's always well, seemed to be something going on or people were absent mm -hmm. or they were in another professional development session just something so um, we, we started talking about it and I had been doing some work uh, on, on uh, web-based instruction within my class. Uh, in fact, I think I may have talked about that on, an, on another one of these sessions last year. The idea of creating um, a, a room for kids online where they can work. And there's so much of that now, things like Edmodo and Schoology and things like that. But I had sort of created my own using a wiki and my students had their own space to work in and we could work together in the room. And I just brought this up and I said, you know, I've been using this this website to sort of extend instruction beyond the classroom. And um, and it works really well and it's a shared place, you know. You you can you can have a your space and I can have mine and we can share a page as well. And I said, you know, what if we take these topics and we just sort of drop them in here and we get to them throughout the week? And boy, that just took off. So that was another one of the things we talked about in constructing the book was this idea of um, of the problems with meetings and then I you know kind of fell back on that experience and said this has worked really well for our group and and we hadn't really even extended it into the the um, the back channel at that point because that was years ago and it wasn't that popular that things like Voxer didn't even exist um, which is another neat thing you know that the technology is is so prolific and it, and it's constantly evolving so there's a lot of times that new things come along and someone will discover and go, hey, I found another thing that I think will be great for this idea of moving our meetings into the cloud. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, as you're, as you're talking also, I'm thinking that with the introduction of technology, the first thing that happens is that technology allows you to do basically the things that you're doing now. Then people start using it to improve the way they're doing things, and then people start using it to... Um, not not just to improve the way they're doing, but to really transform the things that they're doing. 
and it seems to me that this that th this meet me in the cloud is basically the way um, corporations, and it's obviously not education, but corporations are doing project management now. Is that there's teams that are working together from the U.S., from India, from Europe, from South America, you know, all over the world, and because they're awake at different times and they're in different locations, uh, they can't meet. At the, it's certainly not in the same place and probably not at the same time and yet by having you know this idea of having an agenda and the documents loaded key questions posted online um, uh, some type of a discussion forum a video of, of, of what you're doing and, and and artifacts and such that you can really put together teams in ways that you could never have done before yeah and you know a, a lot of that is the, the whole idea of workflow is what I'm hearing you, you talk about that's so important right. when people are all over the world. You know, in in the, the hack and action section of hacking education for this idea of the, the meet me in the cloud portion, um, Jen and I actually talked about how we wrote this book and we used this concept of meeting in the cloud to write our whole book. Um, in fact, uh, Jennifer Gonzalez and I had never met face to face until after our book already written completely and was in production. We met at, at ISTE just uh, a month or two ago. Um, and we really worked in this fashion. And we, we talk about in the book how we, we worked in a Google Doc and we had separated out all of the chapters. And then we used Voxer and Twitter and email and what we would do is work and then um, there was the, the really neat thing was there were times when I would be in the Google Doc on my computer and um, and I'm in Ohio and, and Jen is in Kentucky and I would send her a, a Voxer message and I would say hey I'm looking at hack three and you know I see that you did this or that and I want to talk about that and then she would message me back almost immediately and there were times when she said, yeah, I'm getting into the document right now. So it was really cool because we would be in this Google Doc, and, you know, in a document, you can see when someone else is in there. You know, you get the little alert up on your computer. So I would be in there, and she would jump on Voxer and go, oh, yeah, there you are. And so we were working in the document together at the same time, and we were talking through Voxer, which we could have just called each other, I guess. But, you know, we got so used to that. The, the, the way Voxer was that that's how we worked and it was you mentioned other assets you know there would be times when you know with graphics you know the there was a, a graphic on the slide when I was talking um, at first that we use in the book and um, and Jennifer actually created that graphic using a, a Google tool and uh, so then she would put that to somewhere or she emailed it to me and said hey I've got an idea for a graphic I'm gonna send it to you Sometimes we pinned things. We decided on the cover design. We pulled our designer in to a private Pinterest group. And um, she said, what kind of ideas do you guys have for this? You know, if you could show me some things you like. And uh, it was great. We opened up this Pinterest group. And then when Jen had time, she would put things in there. When I had time, I would put things in there. And then we would go through and say, I kind of like this, or I don't like this. I like this part of this one, but not this one, and and that's really how the the book came together. And it's really wow. fascinating. And then the same happened with our interior designer and our editors and our proofreaders. We literally constructed a book from nothing to the the finished product um, in the cloud. So it, it it really is a system that works. So it's funny because we started to say, well, okay, so this. this is something that we can do in schools to reduce the time it takes to have meetings and then it's something you can use to augment meetings and then it's something that you can use to uh, augment PLCs and then it's something that you can manage projects it's something that you can use to expand projects because you're no longer restricted to just the people in your school you can use people outside of the school and then it can be even be expanded uh, within classrooms because I could see you coordinating three different classrooms in three different countries working where kids are working together on projects that's it's something that could never have been done before now that for sure and and we we actually have um, I don't I don't want to get too far ahead and off track because I'm, I'm gonna talk about one a different one that's not this but we have a hack later in the book uh, called the glass classroom 
and and it really takes this idea this meeting in the cloud and it and it sort of pushes it into the classroom and we we say how teachers can involve kids in these back channels and also then can use these kind of tools to create that transparency for other stakeholders parents teachers in other classes or even in other buildings or around the world so it the the concept on that can be built upon it and it can really evolve into something um, that, that's tremendous in so many different areas. Maybe yeah, we should go back. Just, uh, well, I was just one, one more one more point that I uh, is that it seems to me that if somebody's watching this live now, or if somebody's watching the archive, and they're thinking, well, you know something, I, I'd like to accomplish this, and I'm not exactly sure how to do that. They could contact you, and you could work with them for an hour or two, couldn't they? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, and that's we we talk about that all the time. And I've done podcasts about this, and now a show like this, and say, you know, invariably somebody says, "Well, how can people contact you?" And that is the whole cloud idea. I say, you know, I'm on Twitter all the time, and and really, how I, do you use Twitter? I've never. What's what's this Twitter thing you're talking about? <laughs> and tweeting as a bird thing, <laughs> uh, but but you know, it is it is, and and I'm on there, and it, and it's great. I love doing things like this, and I did a podcast um, interview last week. And uh, same thing, and literally that when I got finished, um, people were tweeting out to me going, "Hey, I didn't, I didn't. The show's not up yet, but I got a message saying you were going to be on. Make sure you send it to me, and I want to talk to you more about this and that." And uh, it is, it's, it's ongoing. It's tremendous, and love it. And yeah, so anybody who sees this or here, please reach out because I want to talk more about it. Okay, so I'll come down now and pull that slide up. If you want to review using it, you can, and then tell me when to advance to the next slide. Great. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, just a, a, a real fast little wind up here because I think we've really talked about this. Um, in hacking education, we really break this down. Uh, a lot of what we've talked about, sort of the, you know, if someone were watching this and say, again, this is a neat idea, but how do I start? There's a, you know, the, the what you can do tomorrow is really important. And because we want teachers to say, I can solve problems today. If, if I'm reading a hack learning book, I could read it tonight and go into class tomorrow and do something. So uh, that's important to keep in mind that there's the, there are what you can do tomorrow steps and then there's sort of capacity building as well because this is a lot we're talking about using um, you know cloud storage and things like Dropbox and Google which often we assume people know what that means and I'm sure there might be people who see this who's, who don't maybe know, don't know Dropbox maybe they know Google Drive and not Dropbox um, or OneDrive or, or some other program um, so there's there's a lot in, in the book about how to do those things and how to get started tomorrow and if you wanted a how would I start tip tonight, uh, the first thing I would say would be to, uh, if you're not active on Twitter, would be to get on Twitter and learn how to use hashtags to, to create conversations or also to try something like Voxer. It's free. You can download it to any mobile app and, um, and that would be another great way to start because you can create groups in Voxer and that can help serve as your back channel to talk to other people. So um, let's move on to our, our next hack. Mitch. Um, pineapple charts. I love this, and this this has been. I wish Jen was here to talk about this because, um, being completely transparent, I, I have to say that this was this was Jen's chapter in the book, and um, and ironically, in the beginning, I talked about how she and I came together, and it was really about this piece because I heard her talking about it in a Voxer group in a, one of those cloud meetings, and. Um, she she was talking about teachers going into other teachers room to observe and it, and it wasn't anything formal and she knew of a school who was doing it sort of formally but in a way that was non-threatening and and this was really um it's sort of exciting for me was like the way that Jen Gonzalez and I came together was talking about this subject and when we talked, I just said, hey, I heard you talking about doing professional development with teachers observing other teachers. And, and it evolved into this pineapple chart. And, and I love this. And I'll tell you the feedback from people who have read the book, and I'm, I'm really happy to say that it's thousands and thousands of people have the book. And, 
and there's so much conversation about it at hashtag hack learning and in other places and so many people said they love this I've had many people principals say boy when I get back to school, I'm gonna do this pineapple chart thing right away the pineapple first of all is a, is a universal symbol of welcome so you, you may have a welcome mat outside your door that might have a pineapple on it um, so so that's where the idea of the pineapple came from and the pineapple chart is is a way of welcoming other stakeholders into our room so so what we want to do the idea behind the pineapple chart is to find teachers who are doing great things and I think m in most schools there all teachers are doing something great um, but and they're often not sharing it and not because they're about it but because in many cases you know we fear that, that we're gonna sort of foist ourselves off on other people um, you know or we're gonna be patting ourselves on the back and going oh look what I'm doing um, and and I think one thing we've talked so much about is we need to leverage the people around us um, oftentimes you know school districts are are eager to conduct professional development and what they do is go out and, and bring people in and in some cases they bring people like me in so I gotta be careful I guess I'm not I don't want to say I'm against that but you know sometimes they they go out and, and pay people a lot of money to come in and teach something and they have people right there who can do it so I've had a lot of conversations about this and said let's leverage the people around us in a way that is um, not intimidating and is in a way that people don't say, oh, hey, look at me, I'm great. So what the pineapple chart does is, and this can be created with a dry erase board, it can be created with a poster, uh, pretty much anything. And, and what we say in the book is, let's, let's start the what you could do tomorrow would literally be to put up a dry erase board or a poster in a, a, a high traffic place like your mail room in school. And, and you, you have to tell a few people about it. You have to say, hey, here's what we're going to do. And, and maybe go recruit one person and say, hey, I know you're doing something with Socratic circles. If you look at Monday here on this chart on number two, um, Hughes is the name of a teacher. So Hughes on second period on Monday is going to be using Socratic circles. And when he fills this in, what it's telling what the pineapple says to my colleagues is I'm welcoming you into my room if you want to come in no obligation at all but if you want to come in because you're curious about circles I'm gonna open my door and you're welcome to come in um, in one of the schools that uh, that they do this in um, we were told that they actually some people put the pineapple outside their room they either set it by the door or on a chair and that, and I think that's just so cool and it's that hey come on in the doors open uh, I don't have anything to hide I do have things to share so then it, it, what someone has second period as a plan time and these aren't necessarily periods depending on if you're elementary or whatever but they are time periods in the day where someone maybe isn't teaching so there might be, depending on the size of your building, if I'm in a high school and there's, I don't know, say, say 50 teachers on second period at any given time, there might be six or eight teachers who aren't actually teaching and they're on a free period or a plan time. We don't really have free time as teachers. Um, so they might see this pineapple chart and say, boy, I really have heard a lot about this Socratic circle and I'd like to learn more. I'm going to go to Mr. Hughes's room and I'm just going to sit in. And, and in, the, in the meantime, on, we see on, on, uh, later on Monday, on fourth period, Turner is, is doing something on Impressionism, some sort of a lesson. And everybody might say, well, I know what Impressionism is, but um, someone maybe hasn't done the kind of lesson that Turner has done. My, my dog wants to, he feels like the pineapple is welcoming him. Um, if you could hear him in the background barking. And then sixth period on Monday, Robertson is doing something with poetry. So he just tells the group, I'm doing a poetry lesson. Now, if I'm a teacher who at some point in, in the year is going to teach something about poetry, I might want to go see what Robertson is doing because maybe he does something and I say, hey, I could use that. Because we don't all have to create new things. We can, we can certainly um, borrow from other people who have good ideas. And in many cases, take those ideas and turn them into something that is uh, is truly our own. Um, you see, on Tuesday, on on sixth period, 
um, there's a Kahoot quiz, and Kahoot is a, a some people listening or watching might know already is a, a really neat um, uh, web-based um, or app uh, quiz tool. So uh, you know, and kids love that. Um, Socrative is another one, and those are, those are great tools to get kids involved interactively, and it, and it gives instant feedback to the teacher and to the student. And if someone has heard of that but has never used it, and they walk in and they see the pineapple chart, and they they about Kahoot, and they go, oh, here's one of my colleagues using Kahoot. I want to go watch that because I'm welcome because it's on the pineapple chart, and I can walk in and observe that. And, and this is a tremendous way to do professional development. It's something you can do tomorrow, and it's something that you could certainly adapt for the long haul and improve upon and really have some fine professional development in your building. So um, that's the, the uh, pineapple chart, um, and, and we're big fans of it. So maybe we could talk about this one now, Mitch. So yeah, so this is, this is interesting. And you know, while you were talking, one of the things, I mean, my mind always goes in, in weird directions. So did you know that the pattern of the bumps on a pineapple is, fib, is it mirrors a Fibonacci number? I did know that, and I gotta tell you, I'm the worst math guy in the world, and I can't believe you brought that up. But I know that, and and Mitch, it's almost like we planned this. I can't even tell you how perfect it is, because I learned about the Fibonacci. Is it chart? I, I learned mm -hmm. about the about Fibonacci by observing a colleague who's a master and a friend um, mm -hmm. who happened to be teaching this. And I was literally, this is before the pineapple chart, at least as we know it, existed and before um, hacking education. But we were really, back in that day, this is a couple years ago, we were really doing the pineapple chart. My friend invited me in and he said, hey, uh, do, do you want to come in? I'm doing this neat thing with my class. Do you want to come in and see it? And Because he knew I'm just the kind of guy who always loved that. I love walking in. This is one of my favorite hacks. I love walking into other teachers' rooms and saying, hey, what are you doing? that's neat that I might want to do. And that was great because he was doing this Fibonacci thing and brought up the pineapple. And I can't believe you brought that up. That's that's terrific. Oh, yeah. But 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 we were doing it. In fact I've been, been meaning to talk to him about this because the of the whole pineapple chart. And I, I can't wait till I see him next time to say, hey, we've got the pineapple chart now and I learned the whole Fibonacci thing from you. Right. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's tremendous. So the other thing I was thinking as, as as looking at this chart is that on on the slide, you know, you were saying you had some really interesting lessons that that teachers were teaching, and then you know one of the one of the things that's, that's up there is the Kahoot quiz, and that kind of triggered me that if I were a tech coordinator or a tech support person at a school, you know, I might be encouraging teachers who are using technology in interesting ways to put this up and to put the different technologies that they're using. So if I have a teacher who's really who's really used uh, Skype in the classroom or, um, or or these mystery Skypes that 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 uh, that a lot of teachers are doing, you know, putting things like that, mystery Skype at a certain time. So so even though that teacher might be an English teacher and I might be um, a math teacher, if I know that she, that this that she's doing a mystery Skype, I might want to just see it just to see how the technology is used so I can apply it in my classroom. Or somebody who's using Kahoot, or somebody who's using Twitter in the classroom, and that this would be, I would think, a technology um, support person's dream is to have something up here for my school. Yeah, and and what you're doing, Mitch, whether you know it or not, is you're this, that you're um you're hacking learning right now is what you're doing. No um, <laughs> The, the idea that you know we're taking certain systems or assets that are already in place and and we're combining them to create something new and and that's really what hackers do you know in the in the the old sense of the word hacker we think the computer hacker that's really what they do is they take existing systems and they they tweak them or they combine them to create something that's really different and and that's what we want to do here and I love that because when you think about it too if you back up to meeting in the cloud you can take the pineapple chart and you can take your technology director who you just mentioned and you can combine those things together and now we can move our pineapple chart into the cloud 
So you imagine if you're using within a whole district even. Right. If you said, um, I'm going to move this into the cloud, into wherever, whatever our cloud-based storage bin is, I'm going to put this pineapple chart, and it's going to tell teachers around the district, hey, this day and at this time, this teacher is going to use this program. And really, you could extend it a step farther, I think, and you could, and we did a little bit of this at my school, and I was very happy to be a part of it. We used to occasionally do an after school. Now, this looked like a meeting, not a cloud meeting. But we would do PD on a volunteer basis. So, you know, there were times when I was, um, and this, this um, not that I, I want to say that it was underhanded, but the, the motive for me in some cases to do this too is when I was a Discovery Educator Network star educator. And one of the things to, to maintain that star, they ask you to do, I think it was two sessions a year um, on some sort of technology. And you could mm -hmm. use that. They really want you to use the Discovery Educator Network stuff, but it doesn't have to be. It could be anything. So I used to just offer up very much like the pineapple thing. I would send out uh, an email and say, "Hey, on you know Wednesday after school, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a session in my room on you know whatever on Twitter or or Kahoot or whatever anything like you said. And if you want to see what that looks like, you're welcome to come in. And there again, that was sort of the pineapple chart before the pineapple chart existed. But mm -hmm. but it's that whole of sending things out, of maximizing and leveraging the people around you. So yeah, I think that's a, a really neat idea, too, um, to have your, your tech person do something like that. Now, it also seems that this is a great bottom-up technique. So it's something that would be coming from the teachers or coming from, coming from the tech coordinator, coordinator. It would have a completely different feel for me if the principal of the school said, we're going to have a pineapple chart and every teacher is expected during the course of the month to have two sessions at the, for, for observation. It's, it seems to me to be a lot better if it's coming barely from people. Yeah, well, and, and really it's, um, hey, do you have this book in front of you? Are you reading from it? Are you cheating? Because it's, no. <laughs> it's, that, that, comes, that comes right out of the pushback section in this chapter in the book is, um, you know, and I think this is such an important thing, and, and actually a lot of the reviews we've received and a lot of feedback in social networks about what people like about hacking education is this pushback section where they say, you know, right away as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, well, what about this and what about that? And we tried to address those things, and this is one of them with the pineapple chart. Um, it can't be mandated by anybody. You know, if, if you have, and principals like it. I mean, as I said earlier, principals have told me on Twitter um, I, I love the pineapple chart, and I'm going to implement this when I go back to school. But that doesn't mean mandated. Again, what it means is we're going to go in front of a staff and say, we want to present it as, as the pineapple, as welcoming. We want to say, we've got something here um, that we think you're going to like that's going to make you better, and it's, a, it's so user-friendly. One of the other things we say is, is people say, okay, well, what if I go into a room because I'm welcome, and I walk in, and I sit down, and I start watching, and it's got to be something completely different from what I thought it would be. You know, what do I do then? And what we say is, if you know anything about EdCamp, they have what they call the rule of two feet. And this is one of my favorite things in any professional development you anywhere. You have a rule of four feet behind you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mitch, we're sharing, it's like sharing a brain. I just thought that. I was like, this is a rule of four feet. My dog running around. Um, but, you know, I love the rule of two feet. It basically says that you go into professional development expecting or hoping to get a certain thing. And if you've either gotten enough or you feel like no negative reflection on a presenter, you leave. You get up and you put your two feet in motion or your four feet in this case and you, you leave. Um, and we believe that the pineapple chart is the same thing. And we say that in the book, that the idea is you go in, it's very informal, you get what you want to get from it, and you leave when you want to leave. In fact, we even say if you're on a planning period, because teachers say, well, I'm busy on my planning period. I like the idea, but I don't have time for it. We go as far as to say if, if I would be grading papers on my, I wouldn't be grading papers. I'd be providing feedback. But <laughs> if, if I'm giving feedback, I'm going to take my papers with me. 
I'm going to walk into this room and I'm going to observe the Kahoot session sitting in a corner somewhere and maybe I'm thumbing through my papers. Maybe I'm, I write a sentence of feedback, but I'm there absorbing what I can. The idea is to take what you can from uh, any session that you're in. So it, it's, it's not mandated. It's user friendly. It's not I'm going to give you, there's never any critique. I don't come into your class when, when you're showing me how to, how to do a, a cool lesson on impressionism, which I know nothing about. Uh, that's art, right? I, um, and, you know, I, I don't come in and say, oh, but wait a minute, why wouldn't you do it this way? Uh, or, or oh, I, I don't like the way you did this or that. It's none of that. It is just really the best, uh, the, the best of professional development we think that there is. Yeah, I, I think it sounds fascinating. I can't wait to see it in practice. Did you want to, you have a, a fourth slide also. Do you want me to come down and do you want to do a, like a summary on using well, your fourth I slide? Think the, I think that was just a sort of a wrap up. Um, mm -hmm. it, but, you know, it may, I don't know if you um, if you want to put it up and I, I'll just talk over it real quickly. Uh, yeah, that's I think probably it was a good idea. And then we can wrap this up. Okay. One, one second. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's the end of the pineapple chart again. Um, and just a, a quick wrap up there again. So we've got the, the five days of the week. And in this, in this example, a teacher has seven periods in a day. Uh, and you see many of them are blank. Maybe nobody can, can do at that time. Maybe no one's teaching at that time. Um, maybe no one volunteered for that time. So uh, this is what it looks like. The idea is to really encourage teachers. Sure. And the other thing I didn't mention is that you know we all have something. That's one of the pushback pieces in the chapter two is people say, well, I don't really have anything to share. I don't have anything great. I'm not creative. I'm by the book. Everybody has something. You know, it could be a, a, a classroom management style. It could be a way you're going to group kids up. So it, it doesn't have to necessarily be something like is on this chart. It could be abstract as well. So we think everyone has something to offer, and we encourage people to, to volunteer to do this because it's a really enriching thing. So we can go to our last slide. And again, this is sort of a duplicate of the first, and, and it's just a reminder of, of what the Hack Learning series is about, is the reason I put this up. I just wanted people to leave here uh, having a, a real understanding of hack learning. And, and these bullet points here, again, sort of summarize what we do in, in hack learning. Uh, I, I'm, my goal is I, I say I want all educators to, to be hackers, and I think they all can be. I believe that we all have some sort of a skill set that not everyone else has. Mitch and I might have very similar skill sets, but he might have something that I don't and vice versa. So what we do is come together as much as we can and say, what's a problem? How can we fix it? What is a, an, an oftentimes ridiculously easy solution? One of the things that people have said they love about hacking education is the simplicity. And, and I love hearing that because uh, Jen Gonzalez and I talked about that so often. There were times when we were sort of, we, we pushed some hacks out of the book because we said it's not simple enough. Um, we think that there's a, a lot of stuff in education and in, in professional development and in education books that is not simplistic and is and in, takes a five-year plan. And not, those might not have their place, but that's not what this is about. So we like the what you can do tomorrow. We want to create a blueprint that says you can expand this over a lengthier time beyond that one day. And then, yes, someone has done it. Here's a hack in action so you can get a taste of how it looks to other people. So um, uh, anyway, this this first.